The Spanish Tragedy, 1931-1939 From the summer of 1936 to the spring of 1939, Spain was the scene of a bitter conflict of arms, ideologies, and interests. This conflict was both a civil war and an international struggle. It was controversial problem. It was a controversial problem at the time and has remained a controversial problem since. For 20 years or more, the bitter feelings raised by the struggle remained so intense that it was difficult to determine the facts of the dispute, and anyone who tried to make an objective study of the facts was subjected to, an, to abuse from both sides. The historical past of Spain has been so different from that of the rest of Western civilization that it sometimes seems doubtful if it should be regarded as part of Western civilization. This difference is increased by the fact that since the late 15th century, Spain has refused to sh share in the experiences of Western civilization and if many powerful groups could have had their wish, would have remained in its 15th or 16th century condition. From the invasion of the Arabs in 711 to their final ejection in 1492, Spanish life was dominated by the struggle against this foreign intruder. From 1525 to 1648, Spain was in a struggle with the new religious movements around, aroused by Luther. Since 1648, it has been, except for a brief intervals and for exceptional personalities, at war with modern rationalism and modern science, with the Enlightenment, the French Revolution, and Napoleon, with modern democracy, modern secularism, modern liberalism, modern constitutionalism, and the Burgese conception of the modern society as a whole. As a result of more than a thousand years of such struggles, almost all elements of Spanish society, even those which were not, in theory, opposed to the new movements in Western culture, have developed a fanatical intolerance, an uncompromising individualism, and a fatal belief that physical force is the solution to all problems, however spiritual. The impact of the Burgess, liberal, scientific, and industrialized West of the 19th century upon Spain was similar to its impact on other back backward political units such as Japan, China, Turkey, or Russia. In each case, some elements of these societies wished to resist the political expansion of the West by adopting its industry, science, military organization, and constitutional structures. Other elements wished to resist all Westernization uh, by passive opposition if nothing more effective could be found uh, to the death if necessary, and to keep secret, secreted in their hearts and minds the old, older native attitudes even if their bodies were compelled to yield to alien Western patterns of action. In Spain, Russia, and China, this attitude of resistance was sufficiently successful to delay the process of Westernization to a date when Western civilization was beginning to lose its own tra tradition, or at least its faith in it, <clears throat> and to shift its allegiance, or at least its behavior, to patterns of thought and action which were quite foreign to the main line of Western tradition. This shift, to which we have referred in the first section of this present chapter, <clears throat> was marked by a loss of the basic element of moderation uh, to be found in the real tradition of the West. As ideological intolerance or totalitarian authoritarianism, for example, grew in the West, this was bound to have an adverse effect upon efforts to carry Western democracy, liberalism, or parliamentary constitutionalism to areas like Japan, China, Russia, or the case in point, Spain. During the 19th century, the elements willing at least to compromise with the Western way of life were not completely unsuccessful in Spain, probably because they received a certain amount of support from the army, which realized its inability to fight effectively without largely Westernized society to support it. This, however, was destroyed by the efforts of the Restoration Monarchy of 1875 to 1931 uh, to find support among the opponents of modernization and by the Spanish defeat at the hands of the U U.S. in 1898. Alfonso the 12th. 1874 to 1885, came to the throne as a military reaction after a long period of revolutionary confusion. The defeat by the U.S., like the Chinese defeat by Japan in 1894, or the Turkish defeat by Russia in 1877, widened the gap between the progressive and reactionary groups in Spain, if we may use these terms to indicate a willingness or refusal to westernize. <clears throat> 
Moreover, the War of 1898, by depriving Spain of much of its empire, left its oversized army with little to do and with a reduced area on which to batten. Like a vampire octopus, the Spanish army settled down to drain the lifeblood of Spain and, above all, Morocco. This brought the army, meaning the officers, into alignment with the other conservative forces in Spain against the scanty forces of Burghese liberalism and the rapidly growing forces of proletarian discontent. These conservative forces consisted of the church, meaning the upper clergy, the landlords and the monarchists. The forces of proletarian discontent consisted of the urban workers and the much larger mass of exploited peasants. These latter groups, which had no real acquaintance with the Western liberal tradition and found it of little hope when they did, were fertile soil for the agitators of proletarian revolution who were already challenging the Burghese liberalism of the West. To be sure, Spanish individualism, provincialism, and suspicions of the state as an instrument of possessing classes made an appeal to the totalitarian authoritarianism of communism relatively weak in Spain. On the other hand, the appeal of anarchism, which was both individualist and anti-state, was stronger in Spain than anywhere else on earth. Stronger even than in Russia, where anarchism received its most complete verbal formulation at the hands of men like Bakunin. Finally, the appeal of socialism was almost as strong as anarchism and much more effectively organized. Socialism to many discontented Spaniards, including many burghese, intellectuals, and professional men, seemed to offer a combination of social reform, economic progress, and a democratic secular state which was better fitted to Spanish needs than anarchism, Bolshevism, or laissez-faire constitutionalism. The weak link in this socialist program was that the democratic, non-totalitarian state envisaged by the socialist intellectuals in Spain was quite compatible with the Spanish individualism and basic democracy, uh, but quite at variance with the Spanish intolerance. There was a legitimate ground for doubt that any so such socialist state, if it came to power in Spain, would be tolerant enough to permit that intellectual disagreement which is so necessary for a democratic society even one directing a socialist economic system. The bourgeoisie of Spain, relatively few in numbers because of Spain's economic backwardness, were in a difficult position. While the bourgeoisie of England and, the Fran and France had attacked the forces of feudalism, bureaucratic monarchy, militarism, and clericalism, and had created a liberal, secular state in the, in the Burgess society before they were were themselves attacked by the rising forces of proletarian discontent on their left, the burgundy of Spain could see the pro proletarian threat from the left before they were able to come overcome the vested interests of the right. As a result of this, the bourgeoisie tended to split into two parts. On the one hand were industrial and commercial bourgeoisie, who supported the liberal ideas of laissez-faire, constitutional parliamentarism, private property, anti-militarism, anti-bureaucratic freedom, anti-clericalism, and a limited state authority. On the other hand were the intellectual and professional bourgeoisie who would have added to this program a sufficient degree of social reform, democracy, economic interventionalism, and nationalization of property to put them into the socialist camp. Both these divisions of the Burghese group tended to move further to the right after 1931 as the growing pressure of proletarian revolution threatened both private property and liberal democracy. The Burghese liberal, uh, liberals feared the loss of private property and, to save it, hastily abandoned their earlier anti-militarism, anti-clericalism, and such. And Burghese, uh, and the Burghese, yeah, yeah, Burghese uh, socialists uh, feared the loss of liberal democracy, but but they found nowhere to go because liberal democracy could find no real basis in the fanatical intolerance of Spain. A feature as prevalent on the right as on the left. In truth, both Burghese groups were largely crushed out and their members practically exterminated by the right because of their earlier allegiance to anti-militarism, anti-clericalism, anti-monarchism, and uh, by the left because their continued allegiance to private property. Strangely enough, the only defenders these burghies found outside their own group was in small but well-organized body of Stalinist communists who ideolog whose ideolo ideological preconceptions of the nature 
natural course of social development were so strong that they insisted that Spain must pass through a period of burgess liberal capitalism and industrialization before it would be ripe for the late stage of totalitarian communism. This point of view, explicitly stated in Stalin's letter to the Spanish left-wing socialist leader Largo Caballero on September 21, 1936, warned against premature efforts toward uh, social and economic reforms for which Spain's degree of industrial development made it quite unready and called for general anti-fascist support for a liberal state against the reactionaries of the right. <laughs> in consequence of this point uh, of view, the communists in Spain were almost as willing to exterminate the revolutionaries of the left, especially the anarchists, Trotskyists, communists, and left-wing socialists, as they were to eliminate the reactionaries of the right. <laughs> This complex and confused situation in Spain was made even more involved by the struggle between Castilian centralization, which was frequently unenlightened and reactionary, and the supporters of local, local autonomy and separatism, which were frequently progressive or even revolutionary. In Catalonia, the Basque Country, Galicia, and elsewhere. This struggle was intensified by the fact that industrialism had grown up only in Catalonia and in the Basque provinces, and accordingly, the strength of the revolutionary proletariat was strongest in the areas where separatism was strongest. Opposed to all these forces was that alignment of officers, upper clergy, landlords, and monarchists, which came into existence after 1898 and especially after 1918. The army was the poorest in Europe and relatively the most expensive. There was a commissioned officer for every six men and a general for every 250 men. The men were miserably underpaid and mistreated, while the officers squandered fortunes. The Ministry of War took about a third of the national budget, and most of that went uh, to the officers. Money was wasted or stolen, especially in Morocco, in lumps of millions at a time for a, the benefit of officers and monarchist politicians. Everything was done on a lavish scale. For example, there were no less than five military ac academies, but the army remained so inefficient that it lost 13,000 men a year for 10 years fighting the rifts in Morocco and in July 1921 lost 12,000, killed out of 20,000 engaged in one battle. The army had the right, uh, incredible as it may seem, to court martial civilians, and did not hesitate to use this power to prevent criticism of its depredations. Nevertheless, the outcry against corruption and defeats in Morocco resulted in a parliamentary investigation. To prevent this, a military coup under General Primo de Rivera with the acquiescence of King Alfonso XIII, uh, took over the government, dissolved the Cortes, and ended civil liberties uh, with martial law and its strict censorship throughout Spain in 1923. The landlords uh, not only monopolized the land, but important, more important than that, squandered their incomes with little effort to increase the productivity of their estates or to reduce the violent discontent of their peasant tenants and agricultural workers. Of the 125 million acres of arable land in Spain, about 60% was not cultivated, while another 10% was left fallow. The need for irrigation, fertilizers, and new methods was acute, but very little was done to achieve them. On the contrary, while the Spanish grandees wasted millions of pesetas in the gambling casinos of French Riviera, the technical equipment of their estates steadily deteriorated. Making use of the surplus agricultural population, they sought to increase rents and to de decrease agricultural wages. To permit this, they made every effort to make uh, leases shorter in duration, not over a year, and revocable at the landlord's will, and to break up every effort of agricultural workers to seek government or unionized action to raise wages, reduce hours, or improve working conditions. While all this was going on, and while most of Spain was suffering from malnutrition, most of the land was untilled, and the owners refused to use irrigation facilities which had been built by the government. As a result, agricultural yields were the poorest in Western Europe. While 15 men owned about a million acres, and 15,000 men owned about half of all taxed land, almost 2 million uh, owned the other half, frequently in plots too small for subsistence. About 2 million more, who were completely landless, worked 10 to 14 hours a day for about 2.5 pesetas, 35 cents, a day, for only six months in the year, or paid exorbitant rents without any security of tenure. <clears throat> in the church, while the ordinary priests, especially in the villages, shared the poverty and tribulations of the people, and did so with pious devotion, 
the upper clergy were closely allied with the government and the forces of reaction. The bishops and archbishops were named by the monarchy and were partly supported by an annual grant from the government as a result of the Concordat of 1851. Moreover, the clergy and the government were inextricably intertwined. The upper clergy having seats in the upper chamber, control of education, censorship, marriage, and the willing ear of the king. In consequence of this alliance of the upper clergy with the government and the forces of reaction, all the animosities built up against the latter came to be directed against the former also. Although the Spanish people remained universally and profoundly Catholic and found no attraction whatsoever or whatever in Protestantism and very little attraction in rational skepticism of the French sort, they also became in indelibly anti-clerical. Clerical. This attitude was reflected in the notable reluctance of Spanish men to go to church or receive the sacraments during the interval between confirmation at the age of 13 and the extreme unction on their deathbeds. It was also reflected in the proclivity of the Spanish people for burning churches. While other peoples expressed turbulent outbursts of anti-governmental feeling in attacks on prisons, post offices, banks, or radio stations, the Spaniards invariably burnt church churches and have done so for at least a century. There were uh, great outbursts of this strange custom in 1808, 35, 74, 1909, 31, and 36, and it was indulged in by the right as well as the left. The monarchists were divided into at least two groups. One of these, the Renovación Española, were support of the dynasty of Isabella II, 1833 to 1868, while the other, the Comunión Tradicionalista, supported the claims of Isabella's uncle, Don Carlos. The renovation group was a clique of wealthy landowners who used their contracts, their contacts with the government to evade taxes and to obtain concessions and sinecures, sinecures, sinecures for themselves and their friends. The Carlists were a fanatic, fanatically intolerant and murderous group from remote rural regions of Spain and were almost entirely clerical and reactionary in their aims. All these groups, the landlords, officers, high clergy, and monarchists, except the Carlists, were in interest uh, groups seeking to utilize Spain for their own profit, and, uh, their own power and profit. The threat to their positions following the First World War and the defeats in Morocco led them to support Primo de Rivera's dictatorship. However, the general's personal instability and his efforts to appease the industrialists of Catalonia as well as his unbalanced budgets and his efforts to build up a popular following by cooperating with laboring groups, led to a shift of support, and he was forced to resign in 1930 following an unsuccessful officer's revolt in 1929. Realizing the danger to his dynasty from his association with an unpopular dictatorship, Alfonso XIII tried to restore the constitutional government. As a first step, he ordered the municipal elections for April 12, 1931. Such elections have been managed successfully by wholesale electoral co corruption before 1923, and it was believed that this control could be maintained. It was maintained in the rural areas, but in 46 out of 50 provincial capitals, the anti-monarchical yeah, monarchical, uh, forces were victorious. Uh, when these forces demanded uh, Alfonso's abdication, he called upon General San Giorgio, commander of the Civil Guard, for support. It was refused, and Alfonso fled to France, April 14, 1931. The Republicans at once began to organize their victory, electing a cons constituent assembly in J June 1931, and establishing an uh, ultra-modern unicameral parliamentary government with universal suffrage, separation of church and state, secularization of education, local autonomy for separatist areas, and power to socialize the great estates or the public utilities. Such a government, especially the provisions for a parliamentary regime with universal suffrage, was quite unfitted for Spain with its high illiteracy, its weak middle class, and its great inequalities of economic power. The Republic uh, lasted only five years before the Civil War began on July 18, 1936. During that period, it was challenged constantly from the right and from the extreme left, the former offering the greatest test because it commanded economic, military, and ideological power through the landlords, the army, and the church.
During this time, the nation was ruled by coalition governments, first by a coalition of the left from December 1931 to September 1933, then by the center from September 1933 to October 1934, third by a coalition of the right from October 1934 to the Popular Front election of February 1936, and last by the left after February 1936. These shifts of government resulted from changes in alignments of the multitude of political parties. The right formed a coalition under José María Gil Robles in February 1933, while the left formed a coalition under Manuel Azaña in February 1936. As a result, the right coalition won the secondary parliamentary election in November 1933, while the left won the third, or Popular Front, election of February 1936. Because of the shifting of the government, the liberal program which was enacted into law in 1931-33 to was annulled or unenforced in 1933-36. to This program included educational reform, army reform, separation of church and state, agrarian reform, and social assistance for peasants and workers. In an effort to reduce illiteracy, which was over 45% in 1930, the Republic created thousands of new schools and new teachers, raised teacher salaries to a minimum of about $450 a year. This affected 21,500 out of 37,500 teachers. Uh, founded over a thousand new libraries and encouraged adult education. Efforts were made to obtain a smaller, better paid, more efficient army. The 23,000 officers, including 258 generals, was reduced to 9,500 officers, including 86 generals the surplus being retired on full pay. The number of enlisted men was reduced to about 100,000 with higher pay. Organization was completely reformed. As a result, over 14 million, uh, yeah, 14 million dollars was saved on the cost of the army in the first year, 1931 to 32. Unfortunately, nothing was done to make the army loyal to the new regime. Since the choice to retire or stay on active duty was purely voluntary, the Republican officers tended to retire, the monarchists to stay on, uh, with the result that the army of the Republic was uh, more monarchical, monarchist excuse me, in its sympathies than the army had been before 1931. Although the officers, disgruntled at their narrowing opportunities for enriching themselves, were openly disrespectful and insubordinate toward the Republic, almost nothing was done to remedy this. The church was subjected to laws establishing complete separation to church and state. The government gave up its right to nominate the upper clergy, ended the annual grant to the church, took ownership, but not possession, of the church property, forbade teaching in public schools by the clergy, established religious toleration and civil divorce, and required that all corporations, including religious orders and trade unions, must register with the government and publish financial accounts. To assist the peasants and workers, mixed juries were established to hear rural, rural, rural rent disputes, importation of labor from one district to another for wage breaking and purposes uh, was forbidden, and credit was provided for peasants to obtain land, seed, or fertilizers on favorable terms. Manorial lands, those of monarchists uh, who had fled Alfonso with Alfonso, and customarily uncultivated lands were expropriated with compensation to provide farms for a new class of peasant proprietors. Most of these reforms went into effect only partially or not at all. The annual contribution to the church could not be ended because the Spanish people refused to contribute voluntarily to the church, and an alternative system of ecclesiastical taxation enforced by the state had to be set up. Few of the abandoned or poorly cultivated estates could be expropriated because of lack of money for compensation. The clergy could not be excluded from teaching because of the lack of trained teachers. Most, expro most expropriated ecclesiastical property was left in control of the church either because it was necessary for religious and social services or because it could not be tracked down. The conservative groups re reacted violently against the republic almost as soon as it began. In fact, the monarchists criticized Alfonso for leaving without a struggle, while the upper clergy and landlords ostracized the papal leg legate for his efforts to make the former adopt a neutral attitude toward the regime. As a result, three plots uh, began to be formed against the republic. The monarchists, led by Calvo Sotelo in parliament and by Antonio uh, Goicochea uh, behind the scenes. In a second, in 
the second a parliamentary alliance of landlords and clerical clericals um, under Jose Maria Gil Robles and the last a conspiracy of officers under General Generals Emilio Barrera and Jose San Giorgio. San Giorgio led an unsuccessful rebellion at Seville, Seville in August 1932. When it collapsed from lack of public support, he was arrested, condemned to death, reprieved, and finally released with all his back pay in 1934. Barrera was arrested but released by the courts. Both generals began to prepare for the rebellion of 1936. In the meantime, the monarchist conspiracy was organized by former King Alfonso from abroad as early as May 1931. As part of this movement, a new political party was founded under Sotelo. A research organization known as Spanish Action was set up to publish texts from greater thinkers on the legality of revolution. A war chest of 1.5 million pesetas was created and an underground conspiracy was drawn up under the leadership of Antonio Goicochea. This last action was taken at, the, at a meeting in Paris uh, presided over by Alfonso himself on September 29, 1932. Goicochea performed his task with great skill under the eyes of government which refused to take preventative action because of its own liberal and legalistic scruples, scrupule, sc yeah, scruples. He organized an alliance of the officers, the Carlists, and his own Alfonsist party. Four men from these three groups then signed an agreement with Mussolini on March 31, 1934. By this agreement, the deuce of fascism promised arms, money, and diplomatic support to the revolutionary movement and gave the conspirators a first installment payment of 15... Uh, uh, yeah, 1,500,000 pesetas, 10,000 rifles, 10,000 grenades, and 200 machine guns. In return, their assigners, Lieutenant General Emilio Barrera, Antonio Lizarza, Rafael de Olazabal, and Antonio Goicochea, promised when they came to power to den denounce the existing French-Spanish secret treaty and to sign with Mussolini an agreement establishing a joint ex export policy between Spain and Italy, as well as an agreement to maintain the status quo in the western Mediterranean. In the meantime, Gil Robles' coalition, known as CEDA, C -E -D -A, Spanish Co Confederation of Autonomous Right Parties, along with his own clerical party, Popular Action, and the Agrarian Party of the Big Landlords, was able to replace the left Republican Manuel Azania with the right Republican Alejandro Larroux as Prime Minister, September 1933. It then called new elections in November 1934 and won a victory with 213 seats for the right, 139 for the center, and 121 for the left. The center cabinet continued in office, supported by the votes of the right, it revoked many of the reforms of 1931-33, allowed most of the rest to go unenforced, released all the rightist conspirators from the prison, including San Giorgio, it gave an amnesty to thousands of monarchists, plotters, and exiles, and restored their expropriated estates. By a process of consolidating portfolios and abolishing cabinet seats, Gil Robles slowly reduced the cabinet from 13 ministers at the end of 1933 to nine, uh, nine, two years later. Yeah, to nine, two years later. Of these, uh, CEDA, C E D A, took three in October 1934 and five in March 1935. The advent to office of CEDA in October 1934 led to a violent agitation which burst into an open revolt in the two separatist centers of the Basque country of Catal and Catalonia. The latter, led by the Burgess left, received little support from the workers and collapsed at once. Uh, the uprising in Asturias, however, spearheaded by anarchist mining, miners hurling dynamite from slings, lasted for nine days. The government used the foreign legions and moors uh, brought, by the Mor brought from uh, Morocco by sea and crushed the rebels without mercy. The latter suffered at least 5,000 casualties, of which a third were dead. After the uprising was quelled, all the socialist press was silenced and 25,000 suspects were thrown into prison. This uprising of October 1934 also crushed, uh, although crushed, it served to split the oligarchy. 
the fact that the government had sent Moors to the most Catholic part of Spain, where they had never penetrated during the Saracen invasions. <clears throat> in the demands of the army, monarchists and the biggest landlords for a ruthless dictatorship alarmed, alarmed the leaders of the church and the, and the president of the republic, Alcalia Zamora. This ultimately uh, blocked Gil Robles' road to power by parliamentary methods. After March 1935, he controlled the portfolios of justice, industry, and commerce, labor, and communications, but could not get the interior, which controlled the po police. This was held by Portella Valadares, Valadares, a moderate cl uh, close to Zamora. Gil Robles, as Minister of War, encouraged reactionary control of the army and even put General Franco in, in as a, his undersecretary uh, for war, but he could not get rid of Portelia Valadares. Uh, finally, he demanded that the police be transfer, uh, transferred from the Ministry of Interior to his own Ministry of War. When this was refused, he upset the cabinet, uh, but instead of getting more from his uh, action, he got less, for Acalia or Zamora handed the premier seat over to moderates. J uh, Jacqueline Chap uh, Chapa Prieta, a businessman followed by Portello Valadares, in order of new elections. For these elections in February 1936, the parties of the left formed a coalition. The Popular Front, with a published program and a plan of action, uh, the program was of a moderate left character, promising a full restoration of the Constitution, amnesty for political crimes committed after 19, November 1933, civil liberties, an independent judiciary, minimum wages, protection for tenants, reform of taxation, credit, banking, the police, and public works. It repudiated the socialist program for nationalization of the land, the banks, and the industry. And industry. The plan of action provided that while all the popular front parties would support the government by their votes in, Cort in the Cortes, only the Burgess parties would hold seats in the cabinet, while the workers' parties, such as the socialists, would remain outside. The election of February 16, 1936, followed a campaign of violence and terrorism in which the worst offenders were the members of a microscopic new political party calling itself the Falange. Open, openly fascist on the Italian model, and consisting largely of a small number of rich and irresponsible youths, this group was led by Prima di Rivera the Younger. In the election of the Popular Front captured, uh, in, in the election the Popular Front captured 266 out of 473 seats, while the right had 153 and the center only had only 54. Seda, C E D A, had 96, the Socialists 87, Azania's Republican left 81, and the Communists 14. The defeated forces of the right refused to accept the results of this election. As soon as the results were known, Sotelo tried to persuade Portela Valadares to hand over the government to General Franco. That was rebuffed. The same day, the Falange attack workers who were celebrating. Yeah, the Falange attacked workers who were celebrating. On February 20th, the conspirators met and decided their plans were not yet ripe. The new government heard of this meeting and at once transferred General Franco to the Canary Islands, General Manuel uh, Godet to the Balearics, and General Emilio Mola uh, from his command in Morocco to be Governor General of Navarre, <coughs> the Carlist stronghold. Uh, the day before Franco left Madrid, he met the chief uh, conspirators at at the home of the monarchist deputy Serrano Delgado. They completed their plans for a military revolt, but fixed no date. In the meantime, provocation, <coughs> assassination, and retaliation were steadily, with the verbal encouragement of the right. Property was seized or destroyed, and churches were burned on all sides. On, the mar on March 12th, uh, the socialist lawyer who had drafted the Constitution in 1931 was fired at, uh, fired at from an automobile, and his, compa and his companion was killed. <coughs> Five men were brought to trial, and the judge was assassinated April 13th. The next day, a bomb exploded beneath the platform from which the new cabinet was reviewing the troops, and a police lieutenant was killed April 14th. The mob retaliated by assaults on monarchists and by burning churches. On March 15th, there was an attempt to assassinate Largo Caballero. By May, the monarchist assassins were beginning to concentrate on the officers of the assault guards, 
the only branch of the police which was completely loyal to the Republic. In May, the captain of this force, Feraldo, was killed by shots from a speeding automobile. On July 12th, the Lieutenant Castillo of the same force was killed in the same way. That night, a group of men in the uniform of the assault guards took Sotelo from his bed and shot him. The uprising, however, was already beginning in England and in Italy and broke out in Morocco on July 18th. One of the chief figures in the conspiracy in England was Douglas Gerald, a well-known editor who has, revealed some, who, who has revealed some details in his autobiography. At the end of May 1936, he obtained 50 machine guns and half a million rounds of SA ammunition for the cause. In June, he persuaded Major Hugh Pollard to fly to the Canary Islands in order to transport General Franco by plane to Morocco. Pollard took off on July 11th with his 19-year-old daughter, Diana, and her friend, Dorothy Watson. Luis Bolin, who was Gerald's chief contact with the conspirators, went at once to Rome. On July 15th, orders were issued by the Italian Air Force to certain units to prepare to fly uh, to Spanish Morocco. The Italian insignia on these planes were roughly painted over, o painted over on July 20th and thereafter, but otherwise they were fully equipped. These planes went into action in support of the revol revolt as early as July 27th. On July 30th, four such planes, still carrying their orders of July 15th, landed in French Algeria and were interned. German intervention was less carefully planned. <coughs> It would appear that San Giorgio went to Berlin on February 4, 1936, but could get no commitment beyond a promise to provide the necessary transport planes to move the Moroccan forces to Spain if the Spanish fleet made transport by sea dangerous by remaining loyal to the government. As soon as Franco reached, the Mor reached Morocco from the Canaries on July 18th, he appealed for these planes through a personal emissary to Hitler and through the German cons consul at Tituan. The former met Hitler on July 24th and was promised assistance. The plan to intervene, uh, yeah, the plans to intervene were drawn up the same night by Hitler, Goring, and General Werner von Blomberg. Thirty planes with German crews were sent to Spain by August 8th, and the first one was captured by the Loyalist government the next day. In the meantime, the revolt was a failure. The Navy remained loyal because the crews overthrew their officers. The Air Force generally remained loyal. The Army revolted, along with much of the police, but except in isolated areas, these rebellion units uh, were overcome. At the first news of the revolt, the people led by the labor unions and the militia of the workers' political parties demanded arms. The government was reluctant because of fear of re revolution from the left as well as the right and delayed for several days. Two cabinets uh, resigned on July 18th and July 19th rather than arm the left. But a new cabinet under Jose Giral was willing to do so. However, because arms were lacking, orders were sent at once to France. The recognized government in Madrid made the right to buy arms abroad and was even bound to do so to some degree by the existing commercial treaty with France. As a result of the failure of the revolt, the generals found themselves isolated in several different parts of Spain with no mass popular support and with control of uh, none of the three chief industrial areas. The rebels held the extreme northwest, Galicia and Lyon, the north, Navarre, and the south, western Andalusia, as well as Morocco and the islands. They had the unlimited support of Italy and Portugal, as well as unlimited sympathy and tentative support from Germany. But the rebel position was desperate uh, by the end of July. On July 25th, the German ambassador informed his government that the revolt could not succeed uh, unless something unforeseen happens. Uh, by August 25th, the acting state secretary of foreign affairs in Germany, Hans uh, Diekhoff, wrote, It is not to be expected that the Franco government can hold on, out for long, even af after outward successes, without large-scale support from outside. In the meantime, Italian and Port Portuguese, uh, Portuguese uh, aid kept the rebellion going. The French and British, whose only desire at first was to avoid an open cl clash arising from the great power supplying arms and men to opposite sides in the conflict, uh, were prepared to sacrifice any interests of their countries to avoid this.
Impelled by pacifist sentiments and a desire to avoid war at any cost, French Premier Leon Blum and French Foreign Minister Yvonne Delbos suggested on August 1, 1936, that an agreement not to intervene with in, in Spain uh, should be signed by the chief powers concerned. This idea was eagerly taken up by Britain and was acceptable uh, to the popular front government of France, since it was clear that if there was no, no intervention, the Spanish government could suppress the rebels. Great Britain accepted the French offer at once, but efforts to get Portugal, Italy, Germany, and Russia into the agreement were difficult because of the delays made by Portugal and Italy, both of which were helping the rebels. By August 24th, all six powers had agreed, and by August 28th, the agreement went into effect. Efforts to establish some kind of supervision by the non-intervention committee or by neutral forces were rejected by the rebels and by Portugal, while Britain refused to permit any restrictions to be placed on war material going to Portugal at the very moment when it was putting all kinds of pressure on France to restrict any flow of supplies across the Pyrenees to the recognized government of Spain. November 30th, 1936. Britain also put pressure on Portugal to stop assistance to the rebels, but with little success, as Portugal was determined to see a rebel victory. Along with Italy and Germany, Portugal delayed joining the non-intervention agreement until it decided that such an agreement would hurt the loyalist forces more than the rebels. Even then, there was no intention of observing the agreement of permitting any steps to enforce it if such actions would hamper the rebels. On the other hand, France did little to help the Madrid government uh, while, the Brit while Britain was positively hostile to it. Both governments stopped all shipments of war material to Spain in the middle of August. Uh, by its insistence on enforcing non-intervention against the Loyalists, while ignoring the systematic and large-scale invasions of the agreement in behalf of the rebels, Britain was neither fair nor neutral and had, no, and had to engage in uh, large-scale violations of international law. Britain refused to pr permit any restrictions to be placed on war material going to Portugal in spite of its protests to uh, Portugal for transshipping these to the rebels. It refused to allow the loyalist Spanish Navy to blockade the seaports held by the rebels and took immediate action against efforts by the Madrid government to interfere with any kind of shipments to the rebel areas, uh, while wholesale assaults by the rebels on British and other neutral ships going to loyalist areas drew little more than feeble protests from Britain. In August 1936, when the loyalist cruiser intercepted a British freighter carrying a supplies to Morocco, the British battle cruiser Repulse when after the Spanish cruiser uh, cleared for action. Uh, on the other hand, the, the British refusal to recognize the rebel government or to grant it uh, belligerent status placed interference with shipping by these forces in, in the category of piracy. Yet Brit, uh, Britain did almost nothing when in one year, June 1937 to June 1938, 10 British ships were sunk, 10 were captured and held, 28 more were seriously damaged, and at least 12 others were damaged by rebels. Uh, out of the, a total of 140 British ships which went to Spain in that year. Uh, by the beginning of 1937, Britain was clearly seeking a rebel victory, and instead of trying to enforce non-intervention or to protect British rights on the, on the seas, was actively supporting the rebel blockade of the Loyalist Spain. This was clearly evident when the British Navy, after May 1937, began to intercept British ships headed for Loyalist ports and on some pretext, or simply by force, made them go elsewhere, such as Bordeaux or Gibraltar. These tactics were admitted by the First Lord of the Admiralty in the House of Commons on June 29, 1938. The rebel, forces, the rebel forces were fewer in number than the Loyalists and fought with less vigor and under poor leadership, according to German secret uh, reports from Spain at the time, but were eventually successful because of their great superiority in artillery, aviation, and tanks as a result of the one-sided enforcement of the non-intervention agreement. <coughs> this was admitted by the government's concerned as soon as the war was over, and by General Franco on April 13, 1939. We have seen that the Italian intervention began even before the revolt broke out, and the Portuguese intervention on behalf of the rebels followed soon after. German intervention was somewhat slower, although all their sympathies were with the rebels. At the end of July, a German citizen in Morocco organized a Spanish corporation called Hisma to obtain German supplies and assistance for rebels. 
This first began to transport the rebel troops from Morocco to Spain on August 2nd. It soon obtained a monopoly on all German goods sold to rebel Spain and set up a central purchasing office for this purpose in Lisbon, Portugal. By August, uh, all import, important units of, German, of the German Navy were in Spanish waters, and the ranking admiral paid a state uh, visit to Franco in, in his headquarters in Morocco as early as August 3rd. These units gave a naval support to the rebellion from then on. Early in October, General Goring established a corporation called Rowak, with three million Reichsmarks credit provided by the German government. This was given a monopoly on the export of goods to Spain, and, ordered, and orders were issued to the German Navy to protect these goods in transit. The failure of the Franco forces to capture Madrid led to a joint Italian-German meeting in Berlin on October 20, 1936. There it was decided to embark on a policy of extensive support for Franco. As part of this policy, both powers were rec recognized the Franco government and withdrawal, uh, and with withdrawal of their recognition from Madrid on November 18, 1936, and Italy signed a secret alliance with the rebel government ten days later. Japan recognized the Franco regime early in December, following the signature of the German-Japanese anti comintern Pact of November 25, 1936. As a result of all these actions, Franco received the full support of the aggressor states, while the loyalist government was obstructed in every way by the peace-loving powers. While the Axis, uh, while the Axis assistance to the uh, rebels was chiefly in the form of supplies and technical assistance, it was also necessary to send a, a large number of men to work some of this equipment or even to fight as infantry. In all, Italy sent about a a hundred uh, thousand men and suffered about 50,000 casualties, of which 6,000 were killed. Germany sent about 20,000 men, although this figure is less certain. The value of the supplies sent to General Franco was estimated by the countries concerned as 500 million Reichsmarks by Germany and 14 billion lire by Italy. Together, this amounts to over three quarters of a billion dollars. On the other side, the Loyalists were cut off from foreign supplies almost at once because of the embargoes of the great powers and obtained only limited amounts, chiefly from Mexico, Russia, and the United States before the non-intervention agreement cut these off. On January 18, 1937, the American Neutrality Act was revised to apply civil as well as international wars and was invoked against Spain immediately. But unofficial pressure from the American government prevented exports of this kind to Spain even earlier. As a result of such actions, shortages of supplies for the Madrid government were evident at the end of August and became acute a few weeks later, while supplies for the rebels were steadily increasing. The Madrid government made violent protests against the Axis intervention, both before the Non-Intervention Committee in London and before the League of Nations. These were denied by the Axis powers. An investigation of these charges was made under Soviet pressure, but the committee reported on November 10th that these charges were un unproved. Indeed, Anthony Eden, 90 days later, went so far as to say in the House of Commons that so far as non-intervention was concerned, there were other governments more to blame than either Germany or Italy. Since we have captured large quantities of secret German and Italian uh, documents and have not captured any Soviet documents, it is not possible to fix the date or the degree of Soviet intervention in Spain, but it is conclusively established that it was much later in date and immensely less in quantity than that of either Italy or Germany. On October 7, 1936, the Soviet representative informed the Non-Intervention Committee that it could not be bound by the Non-Intervention Agreement to a greater, greater extent than the other participants. Soviet intervention appears to have begun at this time, three and a half years after Italian intervention, and almost three months after uh, both Italian and German units were fighting with the rebels. Russian military equipment went into action before Madrid in the period October 29th to November 11th, 1936. As late as September 28th, 1936, the German charge de affairs and the Soviet Union reported that he could not find no reliable proof of violation of the arms embargo by the Soviet government, and on November 16th he reported no evidence of the transport of troops from Odessa. Food shipments were being sent by September 19th, and extensive shipments of military supplies began to be reported a month later. Earlier, but unsubstantiated, reports 
had arrived from the German agents in Spain itself. The amount of Soviet aid to Madrid is not known. Estimates of the number of technical advisors and assistants vary from 700 to 5,000 and were probably not over 2,000. No infantry forces were sent. In addition, the 3rd International recruited volunteers throughout the world to fight in Spain. The 3rd International recruited volunteers. Uh, yeah. These went into action early in November 1936 before Madrid and were disbanded in October 1938. This Soviet intervention in support of, Madrid, of the Madrid government at a time when it could find no support almost could find support almost nowhere else served to increase communist influence in the government uh, very greatly although the number of communists in Spain itself were few and they had elected only 14 of 473 deputies in February 1936 communists came into the cabinet for the first time uh, in September 4th uh, 1936 in general, they acted to maintain the popular front, to concentrate on winning the war, and to prevent all efforts towards social revolution by the extreme left. For this reason, they overthrew Lar Largo Caballero's government in May 1937 and set up Ju uh, Juan Negrin, a more conservative socialist, as premier in a cabinet which continued on the same general lines until after the war ended. The small number of Russian or other volunteers on the loyalist side in spite of the extravagant statement of Franco supporters at the time and since, is evident from the inability of the rebel forces to capture any important numbers of foreign Reds, in spite of their great desire to do so. A after the Battle of Teruel, Teruel at which uh, such foreign Reds were supposed to be very active, Franco had to report to Germany that he had found a very few among the 14,500 captives taken, this fact had to be kept strictly confidential, he said, in December 1937. As a matter of fact, intervention in Spain by the Soviet Union was not only limited in quantity, it was also brief, uh, of brief duration, chiefly between October 1936 and January 1937. The road to Spain was, for the Soviet Union, a difficult one, as the Italian submarine fleet was waiting for Russian shipping in the Mediterranean and did not hesitate to sink it. This was done in the last few months of 1936. Moreover, the anti comintern Pact of November 1936 and the Japanese attack on North China in 1937 made it seem that all Russian supplies were needed at home. Furthermore, the Soviet Union was more concerned with reopening supplies to loyalist Spain from France, Britain, or elsewhere because in a comp competition of supplies and troops in Spain, the Soviet, Soviet Union could not match Italy alone and certainly not Italy, Germany, and Portugal together. Finally, the German government in 1936 gave the Czechoslovak leader Edward Benes uh, documents indicating that various Soviet army officers were in contact with the German ar army officers. When Benes sent these documents on to Stalin, they gave rise to a series of purges and treason trials in the Soviet Union, which largely eclipsed the Spanish Civil War and served to put a stop to the major part of the Soviet contribution to the loyalist government. Efforts to compensate for this decrease in Soviet support by an increase in support by the Third International were not effective since the, last, since the latter organization could get men to go to Spain but could not get ob obtain military supplies, which were what the loyalist government needed for their own manpower. Although the evidence for Axis uh, intervention in Spain was overwhelming and was admitted by the powers themselves early in 1937, the British refused to admit it and refused to modify the non-intervention policy. Although France did relax its restrictions on its frontier sometimes, notably in April uh, through June 1938, Britain's attitude was so devious that it can hardly be untangled, although the results are clear enough. The chief result was that in Spain, a left government friendly to France was replaced by a right-wing government unfriendly to France and deeply obligated to Italy and Germany. The evidence is clear that the real sympathies of the London government favored the rebels, although it had to conceal the fact from public opinion in Britain, since this opinion favored the loyalists over Franco by 57% to 7%, according to a public opinion poll of March 1938. It held this view in spite of the fact that such a change could not fail to be adverse to British inter interests. 
for it meant that Gibraltar at one end of the middle passage to India could be neutralized by Italy uh, just as Aden at the other end had been neutralized by the conquest of Ethiopia. That fear of war was a powerful motive uh, as a powerful uh, yeah that that fear of war was a powerful motive is clear. Uh, but such fear was more prevalent outside the government than inside. On December 18, 1936, Eden admitted that the government had exaggerated the danger of war four months earlier to get the non-intervention agreement accepted. And when Britain wanted to use force to achieve its aims, uh, it, as it did against the piracy of Italian submarines in the Mediterranean in the, in the autumn of 1937, it did so without risk of war. The non-intervention agreement, as practiced, was neither an aid to peace nor an example of neutrality, but was uh, clearly enforced in such a way as to give aid to the rebels and place all possible obstacles in the way of the loyalist government suppressing the rebellion. This attitude of the British government could not be admitted publicly, and every effort was made to picture the actions of the non-intervention committee as one of even-handed neutrality. In fact, the activities of this committee were used to throw dust in the eyes of the world, and especially in the eyes of the British public. On September 9, 1936, Count Bismarck, the German member of the committee, notified his government that France and Britain's aim in establishing the committee was not so much a question of taking actual steps immediately as of pacifying the aroused feelings of the leftist parties in both countries by the very establishment of such a committee. And to ease the domestic political situation of the French premier. Four months, uh, for months, the meaningless debates of this committee were reported in detail to the world in charges, countercharges, proposals, counterproposals, investigations, and inconclusive conclusions were offered to a confused world, thus successfully increased, increasing its confusion. In February 1937, an agreement was made to prohibit the enlisted enlistment of dispatch of volunteers to fight on either side of, in Spain, and on April 30th, uh, pre patrols were established on the Portuguese and French borders of Spain as well as on the sea coasts of Spain. At the end of the month, Portugal ended the supervision on her land frontier, while Italy and Germany abandoned, abandoned the sea patrol. Constant efforts by Portugal, Italy, and Germany to win recognition for the rebels as belligerents under the international law were blocked by Britain, France, and Russia. Such recognition would have allowed the rebel forces those rights on the high seas, which the recognized government of Madrid was in practice uh, being denied. Russia wished to extend belligerent rights to Franco only if all foreign volunteers with, were withdrawn first. While debating and uh, quibbling went on about issues like belligerency, supervision, by patrols, withdrawal of volunteers, and such uh, be before the Non-Intervention Committee in London, the Franco re rebel forces, with their foreign contingents of Moor, Moors, Italians, and Germans, slowly crushed the Loyalist forces. As a result of the Non-Intervention Policy, the military preponderance of the rebels was very large except in respect to morale. The, rebel general, generally, the rebels generally had about 500 or more or, or, or even more planes, while the government had at one time as many as 150. It has been estimated that the greatest concentration of Loyalist artillery was 180 pieces at the Battle of Teruel in December 1937, while the greatest concentration of rebel artillery was 1,400 pieces against 120 on the Loyalist side at the Battle on the Ebro in July 1938. The Italian Air Force was very active, with 1,000 planes making over 86,000 flights in 5,318 uh, separate operations, during which it dropped 11,584 tons of bombs during the war. With this advantage, uh, the, na the, the nationalist forces were able to join their southwestern and northwestern con contingents during 1936 to crush the Basques and form a continuous territory between Galicia and Navarre across northern Spain in 1937, to drive eastward across Spain to the east coast in 1938, thus cutting Loyalist Spain in two, to capture most of Catalonia, including Barcelona, in January 1939, and to close in on Madrid, Madrid in 1939. The Loyalist capital surrendered on March 28th. England and France recognized the Franco government on February 27, 1939, and the Axis troops were evacuated from Spain after a triumphal march through Madrid in June 1939.
When the war ended, much of Spain was wrecked. At least 450,000 Spaniards had been killed, of which 130,000 were rebels, the rest loyalists. And an unpopular military dictatorship had been imposed on Spain as a result of the actions of non-Spanish forces. About 400,000 Spaniards were in prisons, and large numbers were hungry and destitute. Germany recognized this problem and tried to get France to follow a path of conciliation, humanitarian reform, and social, agricultural, and economic reform. This advice was rejected, with the result that Spain has remained weak, apathetic, war-weary, and discontented ever since.